Welcome to Rob Schmidt tonight. The existence of Israel would be next to impossible without the full support of the United States. And that support is a bit shaky of late. Over the weekend, amid intense pressure from the Biden White House and a very critical phone call last week, Benjamin Netanyahu pulled most of his forces from Gaza, allowing Hamas to claim a really big victory. Now, for those wondering why in the world Netanyahu did this, why he pulled out, well, the move was clearly meant to ease the tension between Israel and the United States. As Joe Biden, who's built his entire 2024 political brand around protecting democracy, continues to pander to a crowd inside this country that largely seeks the destruction of the only democracy in the Middle East. Joe Biden's entire Middle East policy is now being reimagined and catered to the few hundred thousand Arab or Muslim Americans who live in swing states. They hate Israel, and Joe Biden is listening. Many are taken to the streets like they did this weekend in Dearborn, Michigan, the epicenter of this movement, where death to Israel and death to America was proudly chanted. We're not talking about the watered-down, weak, secularized version of Islam that is promoted and endorsed by Western imperial powers. Michigan. Glad to know that they want to bring the real version of Islam to the United States, too. Not that watered-down version. Comforting to know that these people have the ear of the president as well, as he questions his commitment to one of our strongest allies. One of the speakers referred to Joe Biden as Genocide Joe in Dearborn, Michigan over the weekend, and that's really all you need to know. But it does go further than just Michigan and just one specific community. The Gaza conundrum threatens Biden's connection to the young and very unstable vote that he needs in multiple states. The loudest of their faction are all the little Antifas and BLMers and the pro Hamasis that love to block traffic and protest in our streets and then everybody that follows them on Instagram. They have turned sour on Joe Biden, and that is really what's making a big impact. Take a listen to Jamal Bowman explain. We've always had a problem engaging voters of color, young people and certain demographics. It's going to be harder now because of how we respond. We have pretty much not responded very well to what's happening in Gaza. Mm -hmm. So this is why we're seeing such a desperate and panicked move away from Israel. He's bleeding too many different demographics all at once. The middle at once the middle class is broke. Inner city black Americans are waking up to the Democrats' welfare grift, moving toward Trump. Women are slipping away in big numbers as well. If Biden loses the college and the early 20s vote, or even if that starts to dissipate a little bit, he's doomed. And that vote is very woke and goes far beyond just Arab Americans or Muslim Americans. But just as fast as Netanyahu caved and pulled out of Gaza to appease Joe Biden's very desperate political calculus, the Israeli prime minister announced this afternoon that the IDF is going back in, which Biden won't like at all. Netanyahu telling Hamas not to get too comfortable because Israel is coming back to finish the job. We are working all the time to achieve our goals, primarily the release of all our hostages and achieving a complete victory over Hamas. This victory requires entry into Rafah and the elimination of the terrorist battalions there. It will happen. There is a date. Good. The IDF will continue the nearly impossible and totally thankless work of ridding the Middle East and the world of a terror group. Playing by the rules of war they are against savages who murder families and babies, and then they get criticized by Western politicians and the media whenever a mistake is made. In the wake of aid workers killed last week, which was a sad story, Hillary's running mate, Tim Kaine, remember him, father of an Antifa protester, says the U.S. military is under threat of attack by Israel. The U.S. military under threat of attack by Israel as our troops assist in the construction of Joe Biden's fancy new port in Gaza. 
even this U.S. military operation. These are um, these are some troops that are deployed out of Virginia, Fort Eustace in Virginia, mm -hmm. in charge of this Marine Pier operation. We knew when we announced that they, they might be in harm's way from Hamas. But, you know, after the events of this week, anybody doing humanitarian aid is going to wonder if they're in harm's way from the IDF. Just a member of Congress alleging that, what, Israel is targeting anybody trying to help the people of Gaza? Mm. You see how desperate they're becoming politically. And it's funny that Tim Kaine didn't have any big defiant speeches like this when Joe Biden's military blew up that family during the Afghanistan withdrawal. Hmm. Did he say anything about fears of what the Afghan people should be worried about? The U.S. government is so careless, so callous. These voices like Tim Kaine's are everywhere right now. Obnoxious, uneducated, demanding perfection, seemingly unaware of the complexities of fighting a terror group that hides behind civilians and doesn't care about the rules. Think about how hard that fight is. When you're fighting people that break all the rules, you're the only side that gets criticized, though. Sounds fun, right? On Sunday, Face the Nation host Margaret Brennan went on a tirade against Israel. This is on CBS. Over the course of several minutes, this typically milk toast CBS host perfectly showcased the lunacy that Israel is up against. Watch as a TV host who lives in the suburbs of Washington, D.C., pretends to know anything about the difficulty of fighting a lethal terror group that doesn't play by any rules as she whines to the Pentagon spokesman. How far reaching is the U.S. investigation of Israel? No. So they may be in violation of international Thus law. Thus far? Part of the same pattern of deliberate attacks on humanitarians, health workers, journalists, U.N. personnel, schools and homes. This isn't a mistake, he says. This is a deliberate pattern, and he is not the only aid organization to say so. Well, we certainly Will there understand. be accountability? We is negligence, gross negligence, failure to communicate, failure to follow through to protect these aid workers a violation? Is there any accountability? Is the Biden administration position still that there should be zero conditions on aid. For six months now, we have been hearing complaints like this. Humanitarians on this program telling us what's happening. Why isn't the president out there talking about you this?